Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one, and as promised in my last puff pastry recipe, I'll be making these irresistible and mouth-watering steak pasties. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and Paypal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. I'll start the recipe by preparing and cooking the meat. For this one, you only need the less expensive cuts of beef, like chuck or stewing steak. The meat I'm using is this cheap but lean casserole beef. So I'll cut it into strips first, then into approximately 12mm, that's half inch pieces. And you'll also need one small white onion, finely chopped. And finely chopped leek is also acceptable in this recipe too. Right, time to move to the stove. Start by heating up 30 grams, that's approximately 2 tablespoons of olive or vegetable oil, in a medium sized pan that has a good fitting lid. Once the oil's hot, add the onions and fry until they're soft. Now add the beef to the pot and stir fry until they have a little colour. Now add 285 mils, that's half a pint of beef stock. Now all I'm using is a couple of beef stock cubes in mine, but if you've got natural beef stock, all the better. And I'll bring that to a simmer. You can now season to taste at this point. Try not to add too much salt, especially if you've used stock cubes to make your beef stock. All I'm adding to mine is a quarter teaspoon of salt and a couple of shakes of white pepper. And for a bit of extra flavour, I like to add around a teaspoon of Worcester sauce, but that's optional. And finally, I'm going to add a couple of these bay leaves to mine, also optional. Fresh or dry thyme also goes very well with stewing steak. You can have a little taste at this point to make sure the seasoning is right for you. Right, put the lid on your pot and reduce the heat to as low as possible and allow it to slowly simmer for one and a half to two hours or until the meat is very tender. Keep an eye on it though. If you think the liquid is starting to evaporate a bit too quick, you can always add a little more water. Don't add more stock, just water. Ok, mine's been going for about 90 minutes now and the meat is very tender, so I'm calling mine done. And the first job is to remove the bay leaves. Now to thicken mine, I'm going to use these well-known gravy granules. If you don't have these where you live, you can use corn flour or some other thickening agent for yours. I like to use these granules as they add a bit more beefy flavour to the filling. Now just add a little at a time until your pasty filling looks like mine. Not too thick and not too thin. Just right. Don't forget it will thicken a little more as it cools. Other ways of thickening is potato starch, arrowroot powder is pretty good or you can even make up a nice quick roux using butter and plain flour and I'll show you how to do that in a future video. And that's it, the pasty filling is made. 
so I'll get the lid on and set it aside until it's completely cool. If you want to cool yours in a hurry, just float the pan in a sink of cold water and it'll be cool enough to use after 15 minutes. Right, on to the pastry. Now of course, for quickness and convenience, you can use shop-bought ready-rolled puff pastry to make these. It's what we used to use in our work kitchens, only the commercially produced brand that was made with all butter. And there are two types you can use. This puff pastry sheet on a roll, or this puff pastry block, which is a little cheaper than the sheets, but obviously you have to roll it out yourself. But what I'm hoping you'll use is this homemade puff pastry that I demonstrated how to make in my last video. The main advantages of making your own are number one, you know exactly what's in it. Number two, it's much cheaper to make your own. Number three, it's made with all butter and not oils. Therefore, it tastes so much better. Number four, you can make it well in advance and it freezes very well too. And finally, number five, of course, the main reason, the satisfaction that you made it yourself. Puff pastry has a bit of a reputation for being very difficult to make. And that's far from the truth. It's actually quite easy. It just takes a little while. I'll leave a link to the puff pastry video in the description box below this video. Or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen. Right, so take your homemade pastry onto a floured bench and start to roll it out. It might also be a good idea to take yours out of the fridge about an hour before using it. Allowing it to warm up a bit will make it easier to roll. Roll it out so you end up with a sheet approximately 4mm or a bit more than an eighth of an inch thick. Just take your time and keep rolling in the same direction up and down. Turn the pastry 90 degrees and do the same until you end up with a nice large rectangle at the right thickness. And now you need to trim it to size. What you're looking for is a rectangle sheet 35 by 25 centimeters, that's 14 by 10 inches. Try to keep it as neat as possible. Use a ruler to trim the edges. And these bits that you're trimming off, don't waste those. Those will make some great sausage rolls later on. You can put them back in the fridge or freeze them for later. Now out of the large rectangle, make four smaller rectangles. At 17 and a half by 12 and a half centimeters, that's seven by five inches. Place each sheet on a slightly bigger piece of parchment paper. Make sure the tops and the bottoms are floured. And this is just to prevent the sheets from sticking together. And this is also a great way of storing your sheets in the freezer for later use. Once that's done, get them into the fridge and have a clean up. Right, time to assemble them. Take one of the sheets at a time out of the fridge. And here's a top tip. To save handling the pastry too much, leave it on the parchment paper while working on it. OK, the steak filling is completely cooled and for filming purposes I've transferred it to another smaller container. Now spoon a little of the filling at a time onto half of the pastry. Try not to add too much. Now square it off as shown. Time for the egg wash. And to make the egg wash, crack a small egg into a suitable container and add a dash of milk. And whisk thoroughly until it's nice and smooth and runny. Now brush the egg wash all over the pastry, including the side that goes across the meat. This will create a barrier between the meat and the pastry. Now using the paper, fold it over as shown. Gently press it down around the edges. If any gravy starts to squeeze out, simply mop it up with a piece of paper towel. If a lot of gravy is squeezing out, then you've added too much filling. Just gently lift up the pastry lid again and take some of the filling out. Try to keep your work tidy. Once it's folded over and lined up, use a fork to seal around the edges. 
This is where the paper comes in really handy as you can turn the pasties easily. Now I'm going to transfer mine onto a parchment lined baking tray. You can of course bake yours on the paper that it's already on. I don't normally waste paper but for the video and tidiness I'm transferring mine to a new paper. And that's the last one on the tray. Now before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. OK, almost done. Right, while the oven's heating up, I'll finish preparing them, starting with the egg wash. Now give each pasty a good coat. With a small knife I'll cut three vent holes in each pasty. And there you go, all ready to go into the preheated oven. Right, once they're in, set your timer for 50 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves will soon be available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. OK, time's up, and they're looking fantastic. That flaky puff pastry is a beautiful golden brown, and the aroma is amazing in my kitchen. I'll get them onto a wire rack and allow them to cool for a few minutes. But you can actually serve these straight from the oven if you wish. But I'll hold back for a while and have a taste when I come back. OK, I've waited long enough. I'll cut one open and let you see the inside. That buttery pastry is absolutely perfect. You can see and hear how crisp and light it is. And you just know it's going to be delicious. I'll have to wait a little longer while I grab a quick photo for the thumbnail. And just look at that succulent tender steak filling. The best way to eat these is definitely with your fingers. And here I go. And oh yes, these are the best. That wonderful buttery pastry is delicious. And that filling is to die for. I really hope you try these with your own pastry. I'm pretty sure you'll be really pleased and surprised how nice these are. These certainly get a big thumbs up from my lot. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Kelly B, Jason Chastain, Christina Ioannoa, The Two Ks, Georgina McDowell, Monica S. Naylor, Derek White, Kenneth Hunter, Eleanor Hogue and Peggy Ewell. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.